Welcome to the Hub Schooling. We have got a special Mandela session today and Mandela is what we refer to the, the eldest group here and all these boys and girls belong to Mandela, the activist. We've got uh, Safa ma'am from all the way to Dubai. She's a BSc uh, honors in chemistry. Wow, it's a subject I would love someone to inshallah deal with. I don't know how much breaking back she sees, but she I think does a lot of you know experiments around and Alhamdulillah, very experienced teacher. She's also doing some work with the special educators. The floor is all yours, uh, Safa sister. Mashallah, these are, and hopefully they'll introduce as they speak to you for the first time. Please yes. go ahead. Barakallah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for that wonderful introduction. And I'm extremely grateful for having granted me this opportunity. Uh, Jazakallah, brother. Uh, right now, I am first and foremost a very good afternoon to all the attendees of this session. I hope that the lockdown has been treating you all well and you all are maintaining yourself safe and sound. All right. Now, my name is Safa Ahmed and I will be your instructor for today. I am going to take something which is going to be an interesting topic for the chemistry version of it. All right. And since I am associated with chemistry closely, it's something that intrigues me all the time. All right. Uh, I just want to have a brief chit chat with all these wonderful attendees today. Can I just uh, pick some of the children? Some of them can interact with me. I just want to talk to, let's begin. Ladies first, let me begin with Ms. Barizwani. Ms. Barizwani. All right. You want to unmute yourself, Ms. Bar, first? Yeah, these are Mandela, I'll let them do it. Yeah, 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 I think we can do that, yes. So I'm unmuting, uh, one minute. Hold on. Okay, now you can mute and unmute yourself, Ms. Ba. go ahead. Hi. Hi, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you, Ms. Ba? 
Fine, Alhamdulillah. So what is it that you do? What, which grade are you studying in or what is it that keeps you busy? I am in 10th and, okay. uh, and uh, I just read my books. Okay. And, uh, and, and I help my mom also. So, so much of cooking going on there or <laughs> so much of Quran? Which one is it that's keeping you busy? <laughs> both. Both, both. All right. Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you can mute yourself now. Uh, I'd want to talk to uh, Mudabber. I see an interesting name out here. Mudabber. Assalamu alaikum. So, how are you? What's happening? Fine, alhamdulillah. So, which grade are you in? Eight. Eight, okay. Uh, so, which school do you go to? Golden All right, fantastic, fantastic. All right, alhamdulillah. So, how is Ramadan go, coming along? Alhamdulillah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. You can mute yourself too. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I just had a brief interaction with two of you. I shall interact with a few uh, rest of them as I go along my session. Uh, first and foremost, let's just begin with the topic straight away. And the topic for today is acids and bases. All right. The topic is acids and bases. And this is a topic that intrigues most of my students and tickles our imagination every time we hear about it. So I'll be running through some key concepts and I would not delve into deep discussions as this is right beyond the scope of the session. So we want to make it fun and I don't want to bore you all out and I don't want you all to be sleeping. So just let's go around brief concepts and then, you know, we shall have some fun. Done deal? So first, let me begin by giving you a brief insight on the world of assets and bases. I'm going to share my screen with you right now. And I am going to begin my slide. Yeah. I hope it's clear and visible to all of you. If any one of you could confirm. It is clear. Uh, it is clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's begin. Bismillah. Um, I want you all to first understand what basically we mean when we say assets and bases. What is it that makes it so intriguing? Now, how do we differentiate an asset from a base? For this, if I consider having two containers, one having lemon juice in it and one having a soap solution. Now, how will they be differentiated? If we take lemon juice, we would observe that the first thing that comes to our mind is that it tastes sour while soap solution would taste bitter. And please do not go ahead and try tasting that soap solution because I'm sure your parents are going to give you a earful. Trust me when I say this, it is bitter. Okay, so why is this contrast in taste? Now, with that simple contrast in taste, it's enough to certify that lemon juice is an acid while soap solution is a base. And the minute we hear the term acid, something that burns surfaces comes to mind. Well, you aren't completely far away from the truth as they are indeed very corrosive in nature. And when we talk about bases such as soap solution, these are very slippery to touch. And some more differences have been provided in this slide, which is coming up right in front of you. It's a Venn diagram, which differentiates between assets and bases. And it shows you clearly, the first point is that it tastes sour and the one on the basis tastes bitter. Now, there are some common things which belong to both assets and bases, and we shall deal with them as we go along the course. Uh, but for now, you can just remember that the assets and bases just purely on the basis of taste is sour and bitter. Now, I would want to know some examples of assets and bases, if it's possible. Um, if anyone can enlighten me with some assets and bases, I just want two or three students to randomly tell me some examples. So, acid is nitric acid, hydrochloric acid. Perfect, perfect. So, these are acids that you see on a common basis or you see them just in the laboratories? Okay, anyone else would like to answer? Acid and base, for acid example. Acid and base, yes. Like in Ramadan, you know, Munib's you know, father is a base and his mother is an acid. Oh, God. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, anybody else can tell me what a base is? Any other base that you come across? It's available in your household. Everywhere you can see it. Anybody? Vinegar. 
Vinegar, yeah, vinegar would suffice as an acid. That's correct. Can you name me a yes. base? Can you name me a um, base? Base. Something which is slippery, something which uh, uh, is white in color, something which your mama might use often in the kitchen to keep clean. Yes. Soap. Soap. Sorry? Farhana says soap. soap. Yeah, yeah, soap I have discussed already. I'm looking for something else. Have you seen the 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 drain corn cleaners? Cornflour, uh, yeah, cornflour is a compound, not a base as such. You have your good old baking soda. You bake cakes with them, baking powder. All right, this is also functioning as a very good base. Okay, now I'm just going to show you on the next slide some of the examples that uh, I have taken for acids and for bases. As you can see here on the screen, you have vinegar, which is made up of acetic acid you have lemon juice and then you have orange juice both of which are having citric acid in them then you have a good old pepsi and cola which of course we don't want to indulge in too much right now and that is made up of carbonic acid and the best acid is right there in your stomach aiding digestion which is hydrochloric acid all right and to your right of your screen you can see all the laboratory acids that we use but these are not available commonly so you just have to use some experiments in the lab in order for you to understand this, all right? Now, I'm just touching base. I'm not going into the tectonics of it because I really don't want to, you know, um, put in too much of information in such a short span. We'll have to go into detail sometime, inshallah, okay? Then, and basis, we have very good examples. The good old chalk, the chalk powder is the perfect example of a base, a strong one at that. The soap solution, as I discussed, then you have the drainage cleaner, which is the Drano actually used. And then you have some more examples. All right. Now, we saw the examples of acids and we saw the examples of bases. So how is it that we can find out if a substance is an acid or a base without actually touching or tasting like we did in the previous case? How do we imagine ourselves doing this tasting business every time is practically not possible. It's not even feasible. So the solution to this problem will make way for our next topic of discussion, which would be the magical world of indicators. All right. Now, as the name suggests, these indicators are substances which are used to question the strength of an acid or a base. So how do they basically indicate? Now, well, this is nothing short of a miracle if you ask me. These indicators change the colors of the solutions into which they are made in contact with, therefore telling the acidity or basicity of that substance. So whenever these substances come in contact with these uh, substances which you want to test, then they show various color changes. Green, blue, red, yellow, you name it, it's there. All right. So based on that, we have some indicators which are natural such as the turmeric, which you would find it easily, and red cabbage, which you can obviously get in from the grocery and then do these experiments. And we also have olfactory indicators. Now, olfactory indicators find a special mention in today's world with the special needs. Children who are visually impaired also makes it very difficult for them to enjoy these experiments and enjoy these tests, which are so visually uh, beautiful. So we make use of something called olfactory indicators. These olfactory indicators help us to detect the acidity or basicity of a substance just based on smell. Olfactory, as you know, is everything related to the nasal. So everything that is related to smell comes under the olfactory index. And therefore, these olfactory indicators, example being onion or vanilla, is used by these visually impaired students when they are participating in lab tests. All right? So this was a fun fact, something that, you know, we usually don't come across because we are not catering to these kind of students everywhere in this world as of present. So right now, it is being used on a large basis so that they are also as normal as the rest of us. Okay, now we also have synthetic and universal indicators, which I will be presenting in my future slides. Now, how do these color changes work actually? Now, I would have done an experiment with you live, but right now for me to do that is practically impossible because of the current situation, me going ahead and getting red cabbage or any of these indicators and actually showing you would be really time consuming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to share a video with you, 
where one of the natural indicators, that is red cabbage, is going to show you the trick of what it actually does when it comes in contact with an acid or a base. All right. So let's just see this video. All right, I hope you all have seen the video. It was clear or was there any discrepancy in the uh, reception? I hope uh, it was perfectly okay. Can you all show a thumbs up if it's a good? Yeah. Oh, there Ahmed says the first one. Muneeb says it. Perfect. Safiya okay. says. Farhan okay. has to put a thumbs up. Great. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. So based on that video slide, you saw that one natural indicator like red cabbage has shown you clearly whether the substance that you're introducing to the solution is an acid or a base. Now, when the session says ends, I want you all to even try another easily accessible indicator right there in your kitchen, which is turmeric, as you saw in the previous slide. Now, what you can do is smear turmeric over some piece of blotting paper and then introduce an acid and a base in turns to it. For example, the first acid that you could use is vinegar if you are at the home or just use some drops of lemon juice. And when you introduce that in contact with turmeric, what you would observe is there would be no color change in the turmeric at all. It would just be remaining the same. Whereas when you introduce a base such as a soap solution or baking soda, whatever is easily available, then you would see that the solution of the turmeric or the blotting paper of the turmeric has turned red. So this, I want you all to try in your spare time and just see what are the different changes that happen. Now, right now in front of you, what you see are some other common indicators that we use. And these indicators are most often used in the laboratories. Obviously, we don't get these easily accessible, like, you know, the methyl orange and the phenolphthalein is not very accessible to us in the markets. So uh, just use this in the labs, but they are very strong indicators and used for titrations. Now, okay, titrations is another thing which helps you to discover whether the substance is an acid or a base. It's a foolproof method. It's the most used method and it is the most appropriate and apt method, all right? So here we have common indicators like litmus paper, universal indicator, we have methyl orange, we have phenolphthalein. And this methyl orange, as you can see, it changes color from orange to red and it also changes color from orange to yellow. Now, orange to red is changed when you introduce it to an acid, whereas it will change to yellow when you introduce it to a base. And phenolphthalein, it remains colorless in the acidic solution, whereas it changes to pink in a basic solution. Now you've seen some terms pH and all that on the screen. We will divulge details on that yeah, on the know. coming slides, all right? Now, I want to discuss one particular indicator here, which you can see written number one, that is litmus paper. Right? I want to drive attention here and I want you to answer me what is a litmus paper. All right. Now, a litmus paper, to understand that, we have to shift gears and jog our memory towards something which we have learned in a biology class. Uh, I don't know if you all have been introduced to the world of lichens or lichens, as you all might say. Some of us, we say lichens, some of us say lichens, whatever it is, tomatoes, tomatoes. The thing is that litmus paper is made up of lichens or lichens, okay? Now, what are these lichens? Can anybody tell me, if anybody knows it, what are lichens? 
L I C H E N S. What are they? It is a plant. It is a plant. Very good. So where do you see this plant, Sufyan? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. All right. So where does it grow? Any idea? It grows on trees. It grows on trees as like a like a mold. You know, just like algae grows or on the water surface when there's a lot of rain and no one's cleaned the ponds. So you see a lot of algae growing. The same way lichens tend to grow on the wood or bark of trees. Yeah. All right. So this lichens, they are an amalgamation or a union of algae and fungi together. So it looks somewhat like a big blob there on the wood. It doesn't look nice, but its use is definitely very important. All right. So uh, this lichens or lichens, they function in the ecosystem as pollution indicators. Now pollution indicators means they give you an index of actually how polluted is your environment around us just by those small little things called lichens. How amazing is that? Now the substances that are extracted from this lichen's body is what is what you call litmus paper. And the most commonly used indicator in the laboratories for acids and bases is obviously without any doubt the good old litmus paper. I'm sure some of you who are in grade 10 or 9 must have been introduced to this in the laboratory where the teacher must have shown you these tests. Uh, if not, let's just introduce ourselves to it one more time. All right. So there are usually two varieties of litmus paper, red and blue. Now, as it is evident in the slide in front of you, the red litmus paper would turn blue when it's contact with a base, and the red lit and the blue litmus paper, sorry, would turn red when it is in contact with the acidic solution. So the first beaker that you see is having an acidic solution. You have introduced a blue litmus paper into it, and as soon as it touches in contact with the acidic solution, the color changes to red. And as you can make it in contact with a red litmus paper with a basic solution, it changes into blue. So when you're seeing this slide, you're coming across a term again, pH, which is being constantly repeated. Now, can one decipher what one means by pH? For this, we're going to delve deeper into the amazing concept that attacks the aspect of the strengths of acids and bases. So basically pH is to do the strength of an acid and a base. Now what do I mean by strength of an acid or a base? A strength of an acid or a base basically indicates how strong or weak is that acid or how strong or weak is that base. Now which of the two solutions would be a stronger acid and which of the two solutions would be a stronger base? That's it that the pH tells us to do. All right now looking in front of you we have a pH scale or a pH meter, as some may call it. Now, this is something which intrigues most of the students. They come up with all sorts of imagination for what it looks to them like. Now, I want you all to also tell me, just trickle that imagination and tell me what it reminds you of. What does this pH scale designate? What does it show you? Can anyone just unmute themselves and let me know if anybody can give me the creative bends of mind? Zayan, yes, Zayan, tell me. Uh, pH is something, it is a meter that shows how much pH. If it is uh, acidic one, it will be lesser than 7. And if okay. it is an alkaline one, it will be uh, more than 7. If it is okay. neutral, it will be standing on 7. Perfect, perfect, Zayan. Yes, that's absolutely right. We're going to look into it into more detail now. Okay. Now, it's a factor that measures the strength of acids and bases, just like Zayan mentioned. And it also shows you a scale which is ranging from values 0 up till 14, where 0 is the most acidic and 14 is the most basic. So what you see at the extremes of the sphere scale is basically the str strongest acids and the strongest bases. All right. So pH of a neutral solution, as you can very well see onto your screen, is good old 7. Which solution might have a pH of 7? Which thing is it that in the nature that may have a pH of 7? Water. Water, perfect. Which water? Is it going to be any kind of water? No. So which one? Uh, the normal. normal. Normal water will not have a pH of 7. Which water will have a pH of 7? Distilled. Perfect, perfect, Ms. Well, that's excellent. Yes, distilled water or the water which has been prepared fresh out of the lab is going to have a pH of 7. All right. 
perfect. That's perfect. All right. Normal water is usually like, uh, I don't know who mentioned, I'm sorry about that, but normal water will have a pH of say 7.5. And in some cases, yeah, it goes to a very drastic 7.9, which is not good, but then we can do little about it. All right. Now, so we can deduce from the pH scale that the higher the acidity, lower will be the pH. As you can see on this screen, it's very depictive of the fact that as you're moving towards the left, you're seeing the value of pH reducing. And the value of pH is reducing implies that the acidity of the substance is continuously going to increase. And as you're moving towards the right, you're seeing the basicity is going on increasing, which indicates that towards the end, you will have your strongest base. All right, and now we have some substances written there, as you can see, and these substances have pH of different values. And the good old common ones that we see is milk. The one which we drink always is mildly acidic. As you see, it is approaching seven. That indicates that its acidity is almost close to neutrals, which means to say that it's the least acidic of all of these substances. And pure water, like it's mentioned, has a pH of seven. Now blood. The substance without which we cease to exist in and around our body has a healthy pH of say 7.2 to 7.4, uh, which is as we can see, mildly basic, not very strong. It is just mildly basic such that life sustenance is optimal. All right. Now, this is all the things that we need to know regarding acids and bases, the basics that come to mind when we talk about them. Now, I just want you to focus on how this pH, how living with this pH is applicable in our daily lives. Is it really that important a factor to acquaint ourselves with? Is it really that necessary that we should know about it? Well, we can see soon now with some examples as I shall move slide after slide and then you shall see how important it is actually in our daily existence, all right? Now, the first place where we will see the pH bringing a prominent role is in the phenomenon of the big menace acid rain. All right. This acid rain, as you know, is detrimental to our existence. It causes a lot of havoc in our daily lives. It is the cause of concern in our modern environment right now. So we know that when this acid rain, which is flowing into a river, as you know, acid rain would directly fall onto the river or onto the land. But if it falls into the river, the overall pH of the river would reduce. Now, what do we mean by the pH reducing? As you saw in the previous slide, when the pH is reducing, it implies that the acidity of the substance has increased. That means the acidity of the river has increased. Now, if the acidity of the river increases, it obviously implies that the aquatic animals that are living in them are going to have a hard time. They're going to cease to obtain oxygen, which would be easily available otherwise, and all hell is going to be let loose. So that's what's happening in the environment right now. As you can see in the picture right now, even the water that is then taken in by the plants will cease to have any value, will cease to give any existence to those plants and they will just wither off. All right. So the reduction in pH is basically what is causing the acidity of that water or the terrestrial land to increase. Now, the next place where we can see the pH playing a very prominent role is our good old mouth. All right. Now, the teeth that are there in our mouth will function appropriately in its best condition when they are having a pH less than, or sorry, it should have an ideal pH of 5.5. But if the pH falls below that, no thanks to our poor eating habits and dental hygiene, then what we face are those dreaded cavities and degradation of the tooth enamel. So tooth enamel is basically the hardest covering in our body, which is right present in the tooth, it is the covering of, of the tooth. So how do you counter attack this decreased pH? When the pH decreases, it implies that the acidity is increasing. That is what is causing your tooth to wither off so soon. So what we counter effect that is with is a good fluoride toothpaste, obviously. Now, a good fluoride toothpaste implies that it's a good base. And if it is a good base, it will neutralize that acid which is present in your mouth. So a base is always used to neutralize an acid, all right, and vice versa. If you have a strong base, now remember, it's not to say that the base is always the good guy and the acid is the bad guy. So even each one of them in huge quantities is going to prove very bad. So either one of them can be used to neutralize 
the either. All right. Now, you have in front of you our most essential organ right now, of which we keep thinking till the end of iftar, which is our stomach. All right. Now, the pH in our stomach is going to be a good 4 to 4.5 in a normal situation. But when we have a load full of iftar, full of fries and full of unhealthy stuff, then what's going to happen is the pH keeps on reducing. The pH keeps on reducing, it implies that the acidity keeps on increasing. So what you counter effect is you go and tell your mama, oh, my stomach feels so full, I'm so bloated, I have an acidity issue, I'm just feeling my chest burning up, etc., etc. So that is something which is coming because of the fact that you have yourself increased the acidity of your stomach by implying the hydrochloric acid present in your stomach to come out, which is what causes the food, uh, food um, to cause a lot of burns. All right. So when these factors cause the acid production to go for a toss and we face these acidity problems, the counter effect should be that the acidity be traced by, uh, erased by a base. And a good base, we have antacids. Antacids are something which we have, or you know, we say that, you know, in our India, what do we say? Gasky goli. We say that have that, right? So that gasky goli is basically what? It's an antacid, right? An antacid such as milk of magnesia. A very good example of an antacid is milk of magnesia. Magnesium, as you know, functions as a very good base. Any combination of magnesium is very helpful in order to counter effect acidity. All right. Now, the concept of pH helps us to understand the self-defense mechanism, which is employed by animals. Also, it helps us to understand the self-defense mechanism of plants. Now, when you see that when you're stung by a honeybee, obviously, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, I would scream. That would be a different story altogether. But what you would feel is immense pain. You're right. The immense pain is why? Because of the sting. And the sting is acidic in nature. So in order to, for you to counter effect this acidic sting, you need to keep that baking soda back again. The baking soda is a very good base. When you apply baking soda onto those bee stings, it tends to make the pain go away very effectively. On the other hand, not to say that all the stings in this world are acidic. You do have basic stings as well. Now it's written alkaline stings there. Alkaline stings is also another word for saying basic stings, right? So the basic stings are what you see in a wasp. Now in a wasp or wasp, whatever you want to say, uh, the acid that is present, like vinegar, will be very effective in neutralizing the sting of this insect. All right? Now, you can see here lots of plants, soil there. How can we forget the growth of plants where soil is playing an important role? And the pH of the soil is a factor that should be considered. It is very, very useful and it is used by the agriculturists time and time again in order for us to have optimum plant production. Now, ideal soil would have a pH of 6.2 to 6.8 such that we ensure good and effective produce. But any untoward increase or decrease in the pH will cause for the destruction of these crops. So like you see on the screen, as the pH is tending to a 3.4 or 5.2, you start seeing the leaves withering off. They might tend to be colored. They might tend to be disfigured. They might not be growing effectively. And likewise, when you move to the other end of this also, like you see 7.1, 8.5, all of this starts making the uh, plants go berserk. All right. So, uh, I would like to unmute a few of you right now. We have discussed quite a few concepts right now. I enjoyed sharing my bit with you all regarding these concepts. And I hope people have not slept off as of now because no. usually what I see is the silence. No, so, don't worry, sister. I think uh, they were all attentive. It's, it's a concept for some of them who have been first time introduced to it. This is right, right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, before you go to your next slide, I know which is a more interesting and, and an engaging one. I've yeah. got an experiment to do with all of them. I wish oh, I had perfect. It. That's so, awesome. <laughs> only thing you will have to help me is you have to be the judge here. All right. Everybody, oh, sure. Why not? Right? Anytime. <laughs> I have no idea. I failed in my chemistry anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, no. no. So, 
So, but I do love this whole idea of what you're teaching them. And right. you can you, choose, you. inshallah, the same way I do. It's easier for me to make boys and girls. Uh, boys, uh, you know. So, uh, yeah. what do you call the boys team? Acidic or basic? I would call them acidic. I'm a pro, pro female all the way. <laughs> oh, okay. So, boys, you are the acidic team, right? And the girls, you are the basic team. Last time, I made some different captains. This time, okay. my, my captain here is... Uh, all right, Sufyan, you are the captain for the Acidic Boys team. Can I have a round? You know, Sufyan, can you show me a thumbs up? Okay, all right, there you are. I'm going to unmute everybody now. Okay, so boys can shout at the boys team. Zayan, you are the vice captain for the boys team. Zayan, can you show me a quick round up? Okay, I'm unmuting everybody. This is Mandela, so I have no problem. Uh, just don't scream. And if anyone thinks that you are making a lot of background noise, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Muslim, everybody, fantastic. Girls, who should I, the new captain be? Uh, hold on, uh, I did not have Amina. Were you appointed last time? Amina, you're the new captain for the girls team, the base team. All right, fair enough. Amina, choose your vice captain quickly. Can I have? Uh, I've got some other boys and girls out here also. Okay, Misba, you are the vice captain for the girls team for this round. Okay. All right, uh, sister, you are the judge here. I'm going to pick up one of these. Can you see all of my tools here? Yes, right. yes, I am very interested now. <laughs> Fantastic. I, whatever I could grab, I grab. It could be acidic basis or neutral or even nothing of it. All right. All right I have no all idea right. what I'm going to ask them. Boys, the acid team first one is this. Uh, so this is Lizol. It's a it's a disinfectant surface cleaner. Boys, acidic or basic? Captain, you want to answer? You want to ask anyone of your friends to answer? Hold on. Someone's speaking in the background, so can I just check if anyone's speaking? Um, okay. Okay, I've got, I, I've unmuted someone. The ones who are not answering, I'm going to unmute them. Someone's still answering. Is your background mom, dad, anyone talking? So you can ask them just not to talk? Or, or... Mom. Basic. Okay, uh, Zayan says it's basic. Is that right, sister? Sister Safa? The toilet cleaner, is that basic? Is that right? Exactly. It is basic in nature. It tends to neutralize the situation. Yes, yes that's Munib, right. Munib also answered basic. Brilliant. Boys, you get one, 10 points for your basic answer. Fantastic. Girls. Girls, you better buckle up. You have to answer this. <laughs> this is this is a lovely little girl. The Amul girl on the milk. Amina's team. Tell me. Hinaya. Amina. It's neutral. It's okay. neutral. Milk is neutral. Misbah says. Uh, do you want to that, check again? That's wrong. It's, it's a bit on the acidic side. It's a bit on the acidic uh, side. Yes, Farhana yes, said yes. acidic. Sister Safa, should I give half the points to the girls? No, no? Acidic okay, side. you have to give it, yes. <laughs> okay, yes, Farhana. Misbah, no, it is acidic. Milk is acidic, right? Okay, no wonder milk gives you all fantastic. Boys, can I come to the boys now? Okay, this is a shampoo. I've split from my youngest daughter, Zainab's Dove Shampoo. Acidic or basic? <laughs> awesome. What do your team think? Sufyan, what does your best your best players are there? The openers. The M&M, awesome. Ahmed, Ahmed, unmute yourself. You're still muted. Hinaya, unmute yourself. Would that be any idea? Oh, yeah. now the team is discussing. Ahmed, re-log in if you can't. Uh, I call IPI, Ahmed, you unmuted. Hinaya, unmute yourself. Basic. Uh, Sister Safa, they say it's basic. The shampoo. Yes, sorry, it's neither of them. It's neither oh, of them. It's a trick one. It's the, uh, shampoos are not acidic or basic. We'll still check. No, the boys are very smart. They're going to Google it now. <laughs> if, if you can come up with a, if a Google answer, maybe your teacher will tell you, okay. All right, so right now, nobody yes. gets the answer. Girls, I've got this Listerine mouthwash. This is this should be easy. We've discussed this. <laughs> Amina says something. What do you think, Safiya? Who's not Sidra? Acidic? That's wrong. That's wrong, my dear. Basic, basic, right? It is no, basic. No, no, no. basic. Nobody gets it. Boys, girls. So Listerine is a basic thing. Anything, but but don't Listerine burn in your mouth? It's a sour taste, Safa. Yeah, Listerine. but like we discussed, it is a bit bitter to taste, but it's a base to treat the dental problems in your mouth. That's always. Ah, okay, I got it. Okay, Mossum, <laughs> why are you stuck? All right, let me go to different. Hold on. Uh, this is called milk of magnesia. It's a different name. Milk of magnesia. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. Acidic or basic? Go ahead. Tell me. You know when uh, constipation, guys? 
yeah. embarrassed to say that's when you use it it's my grand stomach problems yeah. yeah yeah my grandmother used to give me like a like you know a health tonic oh my god that's amazing <laughs> tell me boys it's your question acidic or basic and uh, abdullah what's happened looks like boys have constipation now great acidic or basic mudabbir tick okay what is captain say sufyan basic basic sister basic absolutely right absolutely oh, right fantastic it comes to you you can use this today fantastic <laughs> okay two bottles for the boys only one for the girls so far girls need to buckle up all right by the way i just feel water in okay <laughs> all right girls captain hinaya can you unmute yourself hinaya you still un- uh, sitra what do you think okay i've got someone from the chat Ahmed says easy. Oh, Ahmed, that's not fair. Is he? Ahmed says easy. Okay, all right. Ahmed says, oh, come on, girls, you can't get it wrong. Misbah, can't get it wrong. Quickly, acidic or basic? Safiya, remember it has fizz. What do you think? This is an easy one. <laughs> come on, girls. Don't be scared. It's okay. You will win it. I'm sure, but I. Farhana, what do you think? Basic. Sidra says it's acidic. Sidra? It is acidic. Oh, wonderful. Sidra, brilliant answer. Okay, Sidra is going to be a chemist now. Okay, I'll quickly do now, very quickly. Boys, here you are. Okay, both do the same thing, right? It's again a uh, comfort. It's a water clean. Uh, you know, uh, you put it on the washing machine. Clothes. Fabric conditioner. Acidic or basic? Abdullah. Okay, quickly you can chat it down. Mudabir, you can re-log in. And yeah. this is basic. Zayan, what do you think? Quickly, I'll do three more and you have to go to sister. Sister, they say it's basic. Is that right? Munif says basic. You're yeah, right. Yes, it is basic. All right, boys, yes. you get it perfect. Okay, girls. Getting it. <laughs> water. There's no water here, so I'm not tempted. <laughs> girls, water. Okay. Come on, girls! I'm picking. I think by mistake, I'm picking easy ones for you. It's Farana. neutral. No, 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 oh, Sidra says neutral. Yes, neutral, neutral. neutral. Right answer. Three for boys, three for girls. Boys, there you are. Get all. Come on, boys. Acidic. Get all. Acidic. Acidic. Right, Sister Safa. Yes, it is acidic. Yes. Oh, who said that? Was it Ahmed? Yeah. Zayan. Zayan said. Oh, brilliant. All right, girls. No difficult one. Okay. Oh, I got easy. Baking soda or baking powder? Uh, acidic. Amina says acidic, right, sister? Basic. Oh, it's basic. basic. Let me give it to them. I think they deserve that. Okay, so, all right. Now I've got four for the boys here. We have got four for the boys and four for the girls. And there's too many things in front of me. Now let me get a difficult one. Coffee, boys. Coffee. I just googled acidic. coffee. Acidic? <laughs> yes, it is. Is it acidic? Oh my God, Ahmed, acidic. All right, girls. I have no idea what this is. This is olive oil, girls. Olive oil. Girls, olive oil. Can you google it? Basic. Banana says basic. Sister. Either <laughs> it's not even an acidic or basic. I said it's a googly. It stays right here. Boys, last two here. Hershey's syrup. Hershey's syrup. It's nice caramel flavor, boys. Come on, we need steam. So, yeah. Yeah. It is neither acidic nor basic. It has no nature of that sort. <laughs> it's a fat compound. <laughs> it's a compound. Did the boys say that, sister? Oh no! I'm sorry, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. So this goes to nobody. Last question. Now we've got four, and boys have five. This is for the girls. It is Domix again. It's a what is what do you call it? It's a cleaner. It's a cleaner kind of bleach. It's basic. Basic. Is that right? See, said it's an acid. Come on, it removes gunk out of your clo- toilet. Oh, it's, it's, it's a basic. Can so here we are. Can the boys stand up and applaud themselves? Boys, one, two, three, four, five. Girls, one, two, three, four. I'm so sorry, boys. Won this town. This is floor is all yours. This is Akala. Now my mom is shouting. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. 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 Come on.
sure she's going to give you a full now. <laughs> all right, all right. So that was good, boys. Congratulations, you've done very well. Girls, we will always come up with something better. Definitely, don't you worry. We've got another thing that is going to excite us right now, and something which Definitely. is going to test you as well as it's going to challenge you. So let's see what we've gained from this session. Everyone ready? It's time to play. Hold on. Play quizzes. All right. I'm sure some of you might be knowing how we play this game. Or are you all aware or not? Yes, they are. Of it, right? Okay. Now, uh, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a brief second where I get in the instructions of uh, well as uh, the code. So just give me a minute or two. Right. Uh, you can either play physics online or on your mobile phone, whichever is convenient for you. Um, Hang on, it's just loading. So I'm just going to send you the link. Okay. So I've just entered the link right now onto your chat window. I'm also going to plug in the game code. I want you all to enter this game code into your systems via whichever medium you're accessing it. And then uh, I'll just wait in for a few uh, for the students to join in. And then I shall press the start button, which gives you some time in order to complete this quiz. As soon as you complete it, we'll have a leaderboard showing how many of you all have come in the top five. All right? All ready? So I want you all to access this um, link right now. Anyone needs any help, let me know and I'll be there inshallah to guide you. Yes, I'm just waiting. I don't see anyone join now. Yes, one has joined me right now. Abdullah Saqib. Okay, I see Saqlain joined in. Yes. Okay, Mudabir. Farhana, yes, Farhana is on. I have five players right now. Brother Tawood, would you care to play <laughs> and test yourself? Yes, quite a few players. Mazum, Farhad, <coughs> Safiya. I see. <laughs> Mr. Mango. I wonder who Mr. Mango is. <laughs> yes, Sufyan is here. Mizba, Amina, Farhana. Good <coughs> check. <laughs> Right. Okay, I see Sidra, Zayan, yes. Uh, 14 of you have joined in. Is that the number? Uh, uh, we uh, have actually 20. Okay, yeah, yeah, two of them are uh, probably uh, 
back end teachers for helping us. So two, okay, three. okay, so fantastic. Okay. I think almost Abdullah has Abdullah joined in. Abdullah Sakib, yeah. I think you can go. It's Sufyan's in. Amina, yeah. I've not seen Amina. Amina, Amina was so, there. Yes, I did right. see her. Yeah. Hinaya, Hinaya, uh, I'm not seeing you. Hinaya, any help? Okay, Hinaya. anybody. Anybody needs any help? Come to on the WhatsApp group and, and ask me, and you can go ahead and start, sister. I'll start. Okay, Bismillah. Come on. Uh, so all the best, all of you. Let's begin. Come on, Mudabir, I'm just behind you. Hold on, Mr. Mango. The following statement is true concerning. Hold on, hold on. Ms. Bhatt, don't say the answers. I see one girl in the top five. Come on, girls, buckle up. Boys, you're not doing great. I should talk to you in the period scale between which numbers? Wait. Keep playing. Yes, yes, yes. We attempt the question you choose wrong. We make click or all right. Going good, going good. It's okay. I think I can hear some dads behind this. Just enjoy, just let the kids enjoy. It's the princess lowest. Pure water. Are Kids sound very excited. Oh, you want to answer it no matter what. I can see, I can hear them. <laughs> and this is the job of which would you add acid or bases? Thank you. 
Size of the productions for the day. Well, I'll Help to reduce the amount of acid found in food. Following statements is two concerns. Hey, Miss Bob, what's your rank? Sensei, I think Miss Bob is sick at school. Abdullah Saki, okay, Abdullah, good. Abdullah's done. Almost everyone's done. You can have a leaderboard. Uh, you all can see the leaderboard. It's all showing you there. <laughs>
Mango. Who is Mr. Mango? I want that person. <laughs> Who is he? And okay. Ms. Mr. Mango, if you're hearing us, identify yourself in the chat at least. Yes, Tell yes. I, I'm... <laughs> I was very intrigued in the beginning too. Who is Mr. Mango? All right. Uh, this number four, there's Miss Paso, and number five, there's Farhana. So the top five. I'm just going to put out the top five. Right, Ahmed. And uh, Ahmed Kazi. All right, Ahmed Kazi. Okay. Uh, so the top five. Congratulations. Uh, can you all see the top five? It's Ahmed Zayan. Ahmed has Ahmed also and there's Mr. Mango. Okay. Okay. So it's Ahmed, Zayan. It's Mr. Ahmed Mango. again. Oh, that's Ahmed again. Okay, the same Ahmed. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we'll have to nullify one of it. Then there's Miss Ba and then Farhana. Congratulations, all of you. You've done pretty well. Some outstanding results. I can see the rest of you who have attempted also. Many, many congratulations. It's all about playing. It's all about the spirit of the game. So keep it up, guys. Awesome work, all right. Now, if uh, all of y'all can just unmute yourself, and I'd just like to hear any questions, any queries, anything that is tickling your brains right now and you're eager to ask me. I'm all open for discussion. Please feel free and just shoot out those questions. Anyone there? Captains, Sufyan, Amina. No questions for me? Is it all so clear? Yes. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, uh, have you all been studying as a basis in your classes? Has it been at a pre preliminary level or at an advanced level? What is it? All of y'all are from grade 8 up to 10 or No, I think it is just one girl. Ms. Ba is the eldest here. Uh, okay. Around them, them, all of them are 7th graders. 7th graders. Oh, yeah, right. and some oh, of them right. are actually 6th graders also. Oh, okay, okay. Fantastic. So they must have just been introduced to it in this their is, classes Yeah, well. except for one or two people, this is the first time they've even heard of acid bases and pH. So they've done oh, tremendously my God. well, yes. So then it must have been a fantastic topic for them to understand because it's got so much of scope. It's got so much of uh, information that I could just keep making slides with different aspects, you know. <laughs> so fantastic, fantastic. So I hope everything is clear right now. So I am just coming on to the conclusive part of my session. Um, I ju just hold on just a second. Abdullah, you did it before, Abdullah. Abdullah Safin, have you done acid and bases in your school? Yes. Yeah, so that's Abdullah, uh, that, that's a couple of people, yes. Okay, okay. So these are the, the elder ones, I guess. Uh, yes, yes. Nine and ten, right? Yes. Right, right, right. So do you all have the laboratories to do these tests or does the teacher come with her set of Ms. acids and bases and she does it in class? Ms. Ba, yes. yes, yes, yes. Have she comes to the class with it. Launch. Okay, okay, okay. That's fantastic. Because in India, I have done my BSc in India, so I've done it in Mangalore. So I am uh, very sure the labs there are fantastic. They have so much of variety. The teachers are fantastic. So when we do these things, it really enlightens us in this, right? Okay, the session is formally ending. And uh, I had a wonderful time interacting with you all, teaching you all. Uh, some interesting concepts have been shared. I hope you'll probe into it further and learn something more from this session. It's not just about learning what you have from this session. It's about how well you adopt that into your daily lives and try to garner two or three more 
uh, different concepts. And the main thing is you all need to have fun while doing this. I hope you all have had fun. You all have enjoyed it. I'm not bored you guys because that should be the last thing on my agenda is to bore you guys out. I have two children myself and I know when it gets boring for them. So I hope it was all good for all of you. Can I get a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it is? <laughs> Perfect, perfect. I can see from Sufyan, there's a thumbs up there. Okay. Oh. Mashallah, the chat's really nice. Farhad Zaina says she really loved it. Saklain says she loved it. Uh, all right, all right. Oh. Good to know, good to know. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So you all have been wonderful. I have interacted with you all. And inshallah, till we meet next time, till we have some interaction, if possible, stay safe, stay motivated, and keep searching. And don't stop till you have the answers. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sister. Jazakallah. It was wonderful, inshallah. I think uh, we will end up on this, everybody. And I'll see you again next Monday. Barakallah, fiqh, sister. Once again. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, brother Daud, for giving me this opportunity. I had a great time. Thank you sister, very much. You know, I think we must thank you for you know, taking it up so beautifully. Alhamdulillah. It's, it's wonderful. Barakallah. I hope it was you. all to your uh, liking. It was all okay. I hope. Jazakallah. We love you. And thank you. Messages are pouring on the chat. I'll, I'll leave the meeting now. Jazakallah, everybody. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye.